Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 48's World, where we do reviews on Throwback Saturday and Sundays. Okay, this is Sunday. Happy Sunday, June 5th, 2016. Keeping this at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I told y'all I was going to bring you back another throwback, but goody. And I am doing it for you. The new one I'm introducing to you all is Sanford and Son. The title of today's episode is School Days, episode 25, season 6, and it aired in 1977. Just to give you a little piece of information about the episode, we have Lamont and Donna are puzzled by Fred's nightly disappearing acts until they learn his purpose, night school. Okay. The characters that are in this episode are Fred, Lamont, Donna, Bubba, and Aunt Esther, and Rollo. Okay? Here we go. Fred comes down the stairs, and Lamont and Bubba, Aunt Esther, Donna, are waiting to go to the movies. Or basically, they just got the group over there as an intervention because they basically want to know why is Fred disappearing at all times of the hours, but especially at night time. Him and Bubba are gone. So he has said that uh, Fred comes in saying, um, Bubba, I'm sorry to hear that your aunt is sick and that we are going to see Bubba's aunt and then we're going to the movies and then we might have to go back to the hospital, but it, it just depends. And everybody looking at Fred like he's crazy and even Bubba ain't even got it. So I'm like, did you clue Bubba in before you made this uh elaborate hoax of a lie anyway we go to donna donna gets off the couch she goes to fred and says hello fred he says hi and sorry that you can't stay and chat because he has to go with bubble and donna feel feel and shows that she's hurt and you know fred be like okay i'll see y'all later come on bubba let's go so they ushers themselves on out the door then you have donna and lamont Lamont tells Donna and Aunt Esther, you see how funny he's been acting and how secretive he's become? And Donna says, I believe Fred has another woman. Esther goes on to say, he's lies all the time. You can't trust him, this, that, and the other. And cannot say if it was another woman. Pop would be a man enough to tell you, Donna. Then Lamont finds a note written from Fred and he goes on to read it out loud to the group. And it says, this is something like a love poem, and all of them look perplexed. Okay, we go to the next day. We have Aunt Esther, Rollo, and Donna. Aunt Esther has brought Rollo over to talk to Lamont about his dad. So, she brought them all together to address Fred about his strange behavior. But first, they go into the kitchen area with Lamont to address what Rollo had come to see with his two eyes. Aunt Esther makes Rollo spill his guts. Rollo goes on to say to the group, uh, I seen Pops in the store buying a king-sized jar of vitamin E. Or when he saw Pops making a beeline haul to City Hall. Um, and Elsa in the background calling Fred a heathen. And then Lamont says, City Hall? Then Donna says, Fred could have been there for a lot of reasons, not just to check out for a marriage license. Then Lamont says, marriage license? In a shocking voice. Then Lamont also asks Rollo to start from the beginning because he's not putting all the pieces together. And Rollo goes on to tell him, his pops was coming out of some fancy boutique, new threads and all. Then Fred comes downstairs, humming a little diddly to his, to himself, not thinking anybody else is in the house. And all of them are, uh, meaning uh, Lamont, Rollo, Aunt Elster, and Donna in the kitchen being very quiet. And he's looking very dapper and, you know, like he's going out on a date, really. Or going somewhere important where he needs to look good. So he goes to make a phone call while the others are in the kitchen trying to keep quiet. Fred makes his call and the others are peeping out the kitchen door and listening. And here's Fred telling someone, I can't go on like this. This 
he has to see them now i gotta see you now is what he's saying and he goes on to say i know it's just for a few more weeks but i just can't take it i don't know how i'm gonna get through it not being able to see you at least one more time then fred goes on to say he will try um but he also says just hearing their voice makes him feel a lot better and then he hangs up the phone and he goes you know to sit down in his seat then elsa jumps out to tell fred loudly aha <laughs> and fred asks so where did you come from out of and then elsa says where did you think i came from fred says under a rock then he goes into frowning and looking disgusted at Aunt Elsa. Aunt Elsa goes on to tell Fred, You can't talk your way out of this one, you two-time and beat it, wearing two-eyed fool. No, weasel, two-eyed fool. Elsa, go, Elsa goes on to say, We caught you red-handed. Then Fred and then Lamont and Donna and Rollo come out the kitchen. Fred asks Lamont, What is she screaming about? And Donna and Rollo is present as well. Okay, then we have Lamont tells his dad, We all just heard your telephone conversation. And Fred, just right now. Then Aunt Elster tells Fred she wants some answers. <laughs> and Elster asks, Who is she? Is uh, you know, in a fast way. So Fred thought she was, you know, sneezing, so he said gazoom type and uh, or bless you. And then he becomes but, you know, because I said he thought she was sneezing. Because she said, who is she? Like that. And then he said, gazoon type. <laughs> but then Donna tells Esther to give Fred a chance to explain. Rollo said he's been waiting for this all day long to see how Fred going to get out of this mess. So Fred tells Rollo to go catch a bus with his teeth. Then Donna asks uh, Fred, who was he talking to on the phone? Then Fred states... He can't remember. He started saying like he got amnesia. He started looking all around, you know, to the left, to the right, to the up, to the down. Then Esther goes in to repeat word for word what Fred had said to the person on the other end of the receiver of the phone call. Then Fred starts to frown. Then he thinks of a poor excuse saying, it was the auto club for maintenance I was thinking about giving for the truck. Then Lamont says the truck is fine and he got to come up with a better excuse than that. Fred is still holding up his lie y'all about getting additional warranty service for the truck in case anybody need to have a tow or they might need to have a tow job one day. And then Elsa goes on out to uh, scream, Lord have mercy, is <coughs> there no hope at all? Then Fred said, not for your face. <laughs> Then Donna goes on to say, Fred, I am really trying to understand your behavior. Then Fred goes on to tell her, Donna is not what you think it is. You know, with some sincerity. So Esther says, there's no, uh, no. Then she pulls out her paper. And that has the poem written down on it in Fred's handwriting. And she shows it to him. And then uh, Fred tells Esther, well, that's easy to explain. He was just testing out a new pen. Then Lamont goes on to say, Pop, that's how you test out a new pen? By writing gushy poetry? And then Fred states, it was a fountain pen. <laughs> then Rollo goes in and asks, Pop, what about those jazzy threads? Pop got on, Elsa said about Bubble being the best man what about that the clothes bubba saying he gonna be your best man what's up with that fred and fred says he will explain all of that oh he just, he's explained all of that donna said well fred oh uh, fred said well what about tomorrow then donna said fred if it's another woman just tell me i will understand no donna ain't gonna understand she probably went up there crying and carrying on probably ready to fight him Fred goes on to tell her, you know I would never do anything to hurt you. Then Esther said, there is hard for me to believe. And Donna agrees with Esther. Okay, Fred gets her from his chair and tells both of the ladies, if they don't believe him, then it's too bad. Then he gets up and goes off into, into the kitchen area from the group. Then Lamont asks him, where is he going now? And Fred says, looking at Aunt Esther's face makes him 
to uh to remember he has to go empty the garbage oh lord then donna states well maybe fred is telling the truth then there's a knock at the door lamont goes to answer it and it's a white woman standing outside the door then lamont lets the lady in because she's asking for fred sample and uh he lets her in and she and she is so relieved she got the address correct because she states she just had to rush right over because fred seems so much in distress fred walks back in the room with some orange juice or a coffee cup or something and um he sees doors and it surprises it shot the shit out of fred and and not in a good way so she rushes over to fred to greet him and uh try to hug him while everyone else is in the room watching this whole thing take place and what is t um the, their eyes and and then donna is not happy at all she, everybody said like they just rolling their eyes at this white woman and then doris says hello fred and then donna says loudly goodbye fred and fred says donna and he's trying to get her to step to stop from leaving outside the room you know as in going home but she gets out the door so quickly he doesn't get a chance to uh catch her and uh, try to explain to her that it's again not what she's thinking it is then doors is asking fred did she say something wrong and fred tells her no and fred tells her since she's here they can go on upstairs and then and, and and then he gets interrupted by Lamont because um, Lamont's asking him to explain where is he been going and where is he think he going now. And Fred is looking at him all confused, perplexed, and then he finally tells Dummy Lamont he's going upstairs where he can have some privacy. And Doris goes on upstairs, leaving Lamont, Esther, and Rollo with blank uh, looks on their faces. We go to commercial. We come back. We have Fred and Doris. They finally come downstairs after been up there, I guess, some couple of hours of uh, studying or whatnot uh, with Doris. And he states in front of Lamont, Esther, and Rollo, Doris, you sure do make a man feel good. <laughs> and then Esther says to Fred, are you going to introduce us? And then Fred goes into introdu introducing everyone uh, present. He goes on to telling Doris Esther's uh, name after Esther Kong, I meaning King Kong was her first husband. Of course, he uh, says Rollo is Lamont's friend, friend of the family, and um, that's pretty much it. He, you know, tells him who his son is as well. Then Esther goes on to say to Fred, her favorite uh, line, "Watch it, sucker." Then Esther goes on to address Doris, and not in a polite fashion. Stating her name is Esther, Esther Anderson. And Doris tells Esther with, uh, with trying to shake her hand, how do you do? But Esther looks at her hand and looks at her up and down. And she does not give her hand out to Doris to shake. Uh, mixing pleasantries, of course. Then Fred uh, then uh, tries to show Doris out. But Esther states, Fred, one, what, what, what about the explanation of his comments and goings with Doris. Doris says she agrees with Elsa. We might need to go on and tell them because a lot of assumptions are going on and it's not in favor of uh, neither one of them. And it's totally a misunderstanding because it's, it's totally platonic. And Fred says, no, we said we will wait for the right time and he has gone and he's going to stick with that. So she feels that they've caught everyone by surprise. Fred says, Yes, everyone but Esther. To catch Esther by surprise, you're going to need a net. And then, of course, Esther, you know, in her little antics again. Then Fred goes on to escort Doris outside to her car, leaving them in suspense to know what is exactly going on. So Lamont says, I don't know what's going on, but he's telling Rollo and Esther, uh, I'm going to follow uh, them. So, uh, you know, well, no, Rollo asks when his dad and um miss doris lee well what is he gonna do about it and he said he don't know right now but he's going to follow them to see exactly uh where they're going if he can still catch them to actually see where they're going to then lamont dashed out the door to follow them he leaves rollo and esther at the house with their mouths wide open then we have fred bubba and doris 
all are all excuse me all of them are at school with the other classmates and they're getting uh their learning on and doris and fred is at the chalkboard doris is at the chalkboard fred is in his seat next to bubble and you know sitting in the classroom and fred is trying to copy off of bubba's paper and bubba is making it hard for fred to cheat then Fred is still trying to mess with Bubba when Doris walks up behind him to tell him to behave himself and to do his own work. Then Fred is shocked at her um, her coming up behind him because she wasn't expecting her to be behind him. So Fred goes on to tell Doris to tell Bubba to stop copying off of his paper. But Doris knows exactly who was uh, what was taking place. And Bubba goes on to say in front of Doris, no, you were copying off my paper. And he asked Fred, uh, well, him and Fred started going back and forth with one another. And, you know, playing like they were like little children in school. And then um, Doris, she reminds both of them that they're supposed to be writing an essay on checks and balances. And Fred asked her in that, is that considered the United States of America or Bank of America? Then Doris tells Fred to do the best that he can. Then she walks off. Or she walks away. Then he asks Bubba, what type of answer is that? Pretty crazy, y'all. And then Fred is talking so loud, he's disturbing one of his classmates behind him. Because he gets up in the back. Meaning the um, classmate of Fred. To tell him to shut up with all his talking out loud. Because he's trying to better himself. And Fred gets scared and asks him, does he feel better now? <laughs> then Doris noticed the commotion. And she comes back behind around the same way she did before. And sees Fred still trying to cheat off bubble paper. And then trying to cheat off another student's paper right in front of him. And he gets startled again by Doris asking him, what, is you do what are you doing again? Then Doris asks Fred, is he cheating? Fred states he was doing <coughs> the bunny hop. Then he started trying to do some little moves here and there. Then Doris asks him, why are you kneeling on the desk? And he tells her his leg went to sleep. She looks at him, shakes her head, and walks away. Then we have Lamont. He don't found Fred, don't came into the classroom. And he's looking for his dad. And he finds him sitting there next to Bubba. And Fred hurry up and gets up from his seat and rushes towards Lamont. To uh, address him outside of the classroom. So he pushes Lamont out the classroom. And then Fred said, now you know. Now you know what I've been trying to hide from y'all. Then Lamont says, ask his dad. So all this time. All this time you've been going to night school with Bubba? And Fred says, yes. I've been taking one of those eight week courses. Then Lamont tells his dad. So you and Doris not seeing each other. He said, no. And then, uh. And the trips to the courthouse, Lamont is asking, and the museum with just field trips or school assignments. And Fred states, for a dummy, you catch on quick and fast. And Lamont is asking Fred, why did you keep all this a secret from everyone who loves you? And then Fred states, because he had been lying to everyone about having his high school diploma, he tells the man he had to quit school in his senior year to take care of his um, father and mother. And um, because they had a habit. Then Lamont looks kind of disturbed and asks, what type of habit did they have? He said, eating. <laughs> then Lamont says, so all of this was a matter of pride with you. And Fred says, uh, he goes on to say, at his age, that's all he got to hold on to is pride. Uh, not counting his good looks, of course. And then Lamont tells his dad, you are some piece of work. You know that? He gives his dad a big hug and, you know, just a smiling face on his face that he's so very proud of his dad. And he just couldn't believe that he actually did all of this. So we go into the next day. Then we have Lamont. He is helping Fred study. Uh, for his final exam and they both are trying to soak in as much information by word by using word association and Fred starts to get it after a few times especially with the um, the uh, Benjamin Franklin thing and electricity and then Fred said yeah I associated with if somebody borrowed money or asked to borrow money from, from me I tell them to go fly a kite 
kite means electricity because that's what uh, started Ben Franklin out there at night you know struck by lightning the kite he was flying you know jolted him with electricity and uh, Lamont started smiling and said yes that is exactly right uh, but before that <laughs> oh lord Fred, uh, Lamont had asked him a question and I think it was Thomas, something about Thomas Jefferson. But Fred got the answer right, but he was looking in the palm of his hands because he had wrote down the answers to the questions that he thought would be relevant on the test or whatnot when he had to take it. And Lamont uh, got on him so bad, and that's when they started the word association uh, game that made him stick, um, had let a lot of information stick to him for um, helping him when he takes his test. Then Lamont feels his dad is going to pass with flying colors. He has no doubt in that. Then Bubba comes over to check on his investment and to see how uh, Fred is faring with his studies. Then Lamont asks Bubba, what does he mean by him being the best man? Because that's one piece of the puzzle that never really got explained. And then they both explained to him that they made a $50 bet or a wager or who's going to be the best student or man of the class uh, meaning valedictorian or you know best student if that's all they were given and Bubba just assumed that it would be him and Fred said no nah, it's going to be me so both of them had this whole thing of uh, who was going to get what and when so the uh, the day of uh, the last day of class is also uh, incorporated with the last day uh, some students will be graduating from the class. I guess every class starts eight weeks, but you still may take in people, you know, when a, when it's like a few people are going to graduate, they fill those slots with new people coming in. So there'll always be a recycle of students there. But they go in, we had a last and final scene where Fred graduates with his diploma. Both Lamont and Donna are present. But Fred, everybody, instead of, I guess, you giving a valedictorian, and the salutatorians gifts and diplomas out first like most people would do in graduations and then give the rest of the people that didn't really get anything but earned their diploma that's how it should have been done but that's not how uh miss doris did it and so in the intentions um everybody had got their diploma that fred didn't even think we we're gonna get one especially the guy that got on him about him saying that he's trying to get you know better himself by being in school and he want all that little chitter chatter fred was doing the big busky hurly man real tall man that scared fred he got one and some other older lady got one and he's like well what about me you know he's saying it to himself but what i, I guess i ain't passed i guess i ain't getting nothing because even bubba got his before per i think bubba got the first one to tell you the truth and he actually got the most studious award and so that like pretty much solidified in their eyes that you know um bubba had won the bet so of course fred gone and gave up his money and all that to him and then bubba went up there and got his little plaque and um little diploma and he sat back down so fred had just got all disgusted because he had saw that all of the diplomas were gone and all the awards were gone so he thought hell i ain't getting out and get the hell out of him i knew i wasn't gonna get nothing da -da -da -da. so miss doris was trying to keep him from leaving and, and telling him to hold on she still had one special award that was left and it was like giving him a hint that it was his so um she finally gave him the award and she told uh Eric, the whole class that he was valid valedictorian and um valedictorian and he uh was just shocked and bubba was shocked because that was higher than getting most studious you know i guess that would be like the salutatorian or whatever but anyway uh fred was just so surprised that he even gave doris an apple and she kind of got chuckled herself but then he was thanking everybody especially himself because he said he never worked so hard in his life before and so, um, then he wanted to thank, uh, you know, his, um, son and Donna, Donna being the apple of his eye, his love of his life after, you know, of course, Elizabeth, um, had come and gone and died and everything. So Donna was like the next best thing to her. And then, uh, he let, he say the last, uh, person to thank, uh, which was Bubba. Cause he said Bubba without, um, Bubba's being his life. He wouldn't be able to finance his graduation party. And so that one bubble like really sunk in his seat. Because he had to give up that money. 
<laughs> but Fred was going to throw everybody in celebration of him, you know, graduating from high school. He was going to invite everybody else to his house and, and uh, celebrate as well. So, y'all, that was the Sanford and Son episode that I chose to air or bring to you all in narrative as in uh, visual images. And it was Sanford and Son season 6 episode 25. It aired in 1977 and the title was School Days. So I hope y'all enjoyed it because I enjoyed watching the episode and trying to go back and forth with uh, putting my notes together to try to come and give y'all commentary on it. But I definitely say I love this show also growing up along with Good Times and um, Golden Girls. And I am thinking about introducing another one. But I'm still trying to find photos of at least the episode that I'm narrating for you all. So y'all continue to enjoy y'all uh, happy evening Sunday. And I will talk to you guys on Monday. Love you. Bye bye.